Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. The lake trout are spawning on Lake Michigan. We're gonna give them a try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, it is a cold, windy, wavy day, and we're out on Lake Michigan off of Milwaukee with our buddy, Captain Caleb Zorn. And, and Caleb, this is an awesome time of year to brave the elements, come out here and catch lake trout. Yeah, Johnny, you're right. And the biggest thing with that is being able to have access to the boat. If you have access to the boat, you're going to catch fish out here on the right weather days. And, you know, you can do that really all winter long as long as the harbors and the boat launches stay open, right? Correct. Yep. <laughs> And uh, let's talk a little bit about the lake trout. Now they're fall spawners. They f they spawn pretty much from mid-November to early December. So they're going to be located on reefs. Reefs, correct. You know, even uh, little rock jetties back home out of Kenosha, there'll be lake trout staging out front. Racine, anywhere you can find structure and rocks, different transition areas, you're going to find lake trout. We're going to we got some nice guests with us today. We got our buddy Chris McGillis from McGillis Weimer, and I got Gunt with us right yep the reliable gun the old gun is here no we'll have a good time won't good. we yeah hey folks we'll show what we're using and how we're using it all of that coming up right after this oh, oh. nice bass <laughs> i'm bullet look pull that yeah. up there you go you've proven that that will call fish in yeah there's no no oh my oh. gosh oh, oh look yeah. at that yeah. This holiday, why not give them the gift of their first ride? Now, during the Yamaha Let's Ride Holiday Sales Event, you can make their dream a reality. With 0% APR for 12 months on all TTRs and the legendary PW50, there's never been a better time to make their first ride their best ride. Hi, I'm Len Groom, Technical Product Manager for Power Sports at Amsoil, and as you can see, I'm standing in front of a UTV. Now, when we start looking at some of these UTVs, the first thing that we notice is you can't see the engine anymore. That's because it's hidden way underneath, behind the seats, in front of the box. That means that the engine could tend to run a little bit hotter. That means that you need to not only have a good, high-quality synthetic oil in it, you need to make sure that you're changing it. Now, if you're somebody that stores your UTV during the winter, you should be changing that oil in the fall before it goes into storage. If you don't, however, if you're running it all through the winter, be sure you're changing that oil at least seasonally, if not a little bit more. That way you can ensure that you're protected and the machine will do the work that you need it to do. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. John, you, you've got to know me. I mean, I'm a really passionate person. Everyone on my staff is, everyone on my team is. Um, you know, we are passionate about what we do. Helping somebody out, uh, protecting them, doing everything we can to help tell their story, to make sure they're treated fairly with integrity and with respect, and get a fair resolution, whatever that is for the client. I mean, that's extremely important to us. That's really all that matters. Hey, welcome back, folks. As we talked about, a windy, wavy day out on Lake Michigan off of Milwaukee, and we're fishing for lake trout, but the coolest thing about this type of fishing, we're not trolling. We're hands-on jigging. Yep, hands-on jigging with their walleye gear. And that makes it a lot of fun, doesn't it? Does, it does, the light tackle. And you can use any type of bait, you know. I like the old reliable jerk minnow there because it's got a single hook, yep. and it hooks them real good. But what's the spoon you've got there? I got a moonshine here. It's kind of like a perch fire type pattern and it's got a lot of flutter to it so I'll be casting and kind of bringing it back and letting it flutter. Now was that your first cast? That was the first cast. Are you Jeff? kidding me? 
Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at the battle there, you guys. Going straight down. Look at down. that fight. Now, Chris, you're going to have to grab that net there, buddy. Yep. Okay. Because these things fight, don't they? John, just like I said, I threw it out there maybe 30 feet. Just and what for, spoon was that? That was on the Moonshine Flutter Spoon. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, this thing's got the, some shoulders. I know that does. You know, you always got a shot at a big fish. And again, folks, so much more fun than trolling, isn't it? It is. Look at that Laker to start our day. Get yeah. him in there, Gunt. Nice job there, buddy. Holy cow. Ooh. Your first cast of the day, right, Caleb? Yeah, I hope that's a good sign, John. Yeah, that's awesome, buddy. Look at that fish. You know, that's incredible. Just a few miles off of Milwaukee to be able to catch world-class trout like that, isn't it? That is very special. And that was your first cast of the day? First cast, John. I mean, that is unbelievable. And now, is that a big one? You know, I, I would say it's a little bit bigger than average. But, you know, these days, what's average? Just yeah, right. depends on the bait they're feeding on. All right. Well, good job. Way to Thanks. start us off, man. What happened there, Caleb? John, it, uh, it's been a little bit of a grind here. You know, I switched spoons and uh, just hopping it very slow off the bottom. So slow the presentation down. It's very slow. A decent fish? Yeah, and Gunter's up front here chasing him with the hummingbird, and he says that he gets him to come around when it's just sitting there. So when he moves, moves it very aggressively, they kind of go away. Aren't those fun to fight? They're awesome. We got a net handy? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're like torpedoes down there, aren't they, Caleb? Yep. Okay, here we go. And come on, let's not lose them there, buddy. Ooh, that's a nice lake trout right there. Look at that. In there you go, buddy. You know, that's interesting, though. We went through a couple-hour dry spell. You caught that one on the first, first cast. cast. So we were all trying different lures and different presentations, right? Correct. And man. what did you do to make that a successful cast? Very slow hops off the bottom. Really? Very okay. slow. Uh, almost like a real lethargic jig just coming off the bottom. Aren't the... those beautiful fish? Now, what's the eating quality? These fish aren't too bad, you know, but right now they're spawning, so they put a lot of stress on themselves, and now they're trying to put the feed bag back on. But you know, in the summertime, we we smoke a lot of lake trout. They're really good smoked, Correct. aren't they? Yep. Hey, look at that. Chris McGillis, my buddy. How was that hit, pal? He came, he hit it hard, John. Did he really? Yeah. Now, these things really fight. You've got my inshore St. Croix rod. I use that for salt water. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good rod to use out here. And She's Caleb's chugging. gonna show us how we're jigging here, folks. What was on that, Chris? What, uh, what this you... was the Castmaster, John. It's, uh, Ooh, I think it's yellow. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's cool. There we go. Right. One more turn. One more turn. Nice job there. So Chris, you know when I, I called you and said let's go jigging for leg trout, what did you say? I said heck yeah, let's do it. But I mean it is a unique way. Now you've been out here on the lake trolling and doing that stuff. This is unique, isn't it? It's so much fun. I mean it's cold outside, but when you get these big ones on, John, you warm up quickly. So you're just kind of working that slow? I listened to Caleb. He said work it slow, give it some hops, give it a pause, and then just he she cracked it. Good. All right, well this is not nice. Now that right there, Chris, if you wanted to eat one, is probably about the good size right there, you know? And a lot of guys like to take these and have them smoke, Chris. Yeah, beautiful. Look at the colors on it. They really, really are Orange pretty. Orange fins. So you slowed your retrieve down there, huh? Yes, big time. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do that, too. I mean, normally this time of year you're catch catching them pretty easy, but we're working today, aren't we? We're putting our time in, but that's, uh, like you said, nothing worth anything. you got to put time in. Now, hey, Caleb, maybe you can show us how you are casting and jigging that. Yeah, so I'm just doing short little lifts, and I, like I said, they they might be less than two feet, and the bottom's real rocky out here, so you might lift it up, and it's coming up and hitting bottom, and all of a sudden you'll get like a flutter where it goes down for a good five seconds, and you're just giving it short little short little hops. And that's with the cast master or a spoon yep. or any type of bait you want it to flutter a little bit. Just main uh, maintaining contact with the bottom and hopping it off. I just did exactly what you told me to do, Chris and Caleb. Slowed that down, buddy, and he smoked that Castmaster. Oh, man, is this fun, folks. They just battle you. Oh, look at that rod, man. That is so cool. I have to stand up, I think, to get this guy. I'll tell you what I did, Caleb. You just showed us how to jig those, and, man, that worked. Slowing it down, just, you know, a little pop. Ooh, look at that, folks. 
Okay. Oh, man. This feels like a pretty big fish, you guys. Yeah, we turned that camera off for a second. Look at, look, look at, at that thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, make sure you're look at that. Oh, my gosh. Pretty tight. I know. Loosen it a tad there. Work them, John. Holy cow. I'm trying to keep my balance here, folks. Wow. Oh, here he is. Uh, here he comes. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Holy moly. Nice work. Folks, I got to sit here and rest for a second. I mean, that was so cool. And Caleb had just showed us how to slow that presentation down. So, you know, a lot of people think of Castmaster just for steady retrieve. That's not the case, like Caleb said before. So I was just popping it. That's a big one. Wait till you see the colors on yeah. this fish. Okay, that's that Castmaster, and I'll tell you what, he was barely hooked. Yep. But it was such a neat hit. Pop it off the rock, pop it off the rock, boom, you know? Those, uh, they're definitely taking it with a slower retrieve, you know, very slow presentation. Now, when you're doing this, you know, I like to use that 20-pound smackdown, that Seaguar smackdown line. Yep. But your leader material, what do you like for this? You know, I'm using the uh, the trout and salmon Seaguar. And today we're beefed up a little bit. I think we're running uh, 20, just because the rocks and the zebra mussels are so, so strong down there. It feels like every, you know, maybe 15, 20 casts, you got to check it and just make sure, you know, because like you said, these fish are definitely staying tight to the bottom. Hold that out. I mean, isn't, now folks, that is a solid, what, 12 to 14 pounder? Yeah, yeah, it is. And how big do they get? All the way into the 20s. Well, let's even get a 20 That'd today. That'd be awesome. Hey, good job, buddy. Nice, nice fish. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save $100 in the Clam Yukon XT Thermal two-man ice shelter on sale for $799.99. Hey, Kale, Lake Michigan is so big. How do you kind of narrow it down where, where you figure the lake trout will be? It, it really comes down to your electronics. Like the hummingbird, we've been paying a lot of attention to it today. Figuring out contours with the little humps, some troughs maybe, and that seems to be where the fish are sitting. Now you control for them too this time of year with success, right? Oh yeah, guys will pull uh, spoons on short lead cores, some planer boards here and there, dipsy divers, and have good success doing it as well. Now do you want a hard bottom? Honestly, that de that depends on the hour. I wouldn't even say the day. A lot of times those fish will move around and they'll move up out of the hard stuff, maybe chase some bait, eat it, maybe slide off onto the mud, you know, the clay bottom and just kind of hang there after they've, you know, put the feet on for a while. Now I noticed too that we're fishing water that comes up to about 35 feet with 50 feet around it. Sometimes they're not right on top, they're on the edges? Correct, yeah. I mean, they'll slide up top to eat those gobies and whatever else kind of bait fish is down there and then once they're done they'll kind of slide off down below and just kind of lay there with a the full belly we were fishing lake michigan out of milwaukee a zero hour drive from milwaukee one and a half hours from chicago and five hours from minneapolis i'll be your beast of burden a friend in unfriendly situations stumps roots rocks throw me in and watch me swim mother nature may be tough i'm tougher i'll take you with grit and guts beat glitz and glamour where the fish are worth the fight if you ask me the bigger the question marks the better the quest Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here, the Johnson, just spray it right off. And obviously, you got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Eagle Claw, the pick of the week. The Eagle Claw Chappelle Winter Camo Ice Fishing Jet Sled is very helpful to have to bring all your items out on the ice. Eagle Claw, the only hook made right here in the USA. Look at that ripping line on McGillis. I lost him. Wait. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He's coming at you, I think. You know, he's on. What Let's... they'll do a lot of times, right, Caleb, is, is charge the boat, right? Absolutely, John. These fish... 
you yeah. know, they don't realize it until a little bit that they're hooked. Yeah. They're thinking they're getting a little snack down below. Now, Chris, you do a lot of fishing. This is kind of cool doing it right in your own backyard, isn't it? Absolutely. This is so ooh, much fun. Ooh, look at that rod, man. It sort of reminds me of ocean fishing, John, a little bit. You a know little I mean? bit. A little bit. But this is absolute world class, folks. Really is out here. You getting tired there, Chris? <laughs> The old right arm's getting a little tired. Was that short pops on yep, that retrieve? Same thing. Just like Caleb said, we you know we sort of fine-tuned it here, and, and they, they clearly want it slower and a little bit shorter hops. Oh, look at this, you guys. Look at this. I don't know if Ryan, the photographer, can get back here. Oh, gosh, look John, at... John, I'm trying not to fall in the water. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There you go, Chris McGillis. Boy, that's a beautiful laker. Hey, Chris, want to thank you for sponsoring the show. You guys are, are really so good at personal injury law, but you've opened up some new offices around the state. Yeah, John, last couple months we opened the Madison office, and now we just opened our Kakana office, too, in Fox Valley. Well, you guys do a great job, and what I like is the personal care that you guys take, and you're all fishermen and hunters over there, so you understand us guys, too. <laughs> Absolutely. We can really relate to people, and it's fun to tell stories and share things with people that you know have similar characteristics and similar... Uh, things they like to do outdoors. You have fun with that one? Absolutely. Look at that fish. That beauty. Hey, look at this. We moved into the the gap in the Milwaukee Harbor, and I think I've got either a goby, maybe a ooh. Look at that. Hey, check that out, guys. Hey, that is interesting, folks. That's a pretty nice size perch there. And uh, Caleb, the perch come into these areas in the fall too? Yeah, John, we're starting to see more and more of them this time of year once uh, we start jigging for the lake trout and the brown trout around these gaps. There's been more perch showing up. I mean, there's some nice ones too, right? Oh yeah, Lake Michigan perch. Another one here, Caleb, another one, buddy. Le oh, look at that. Hey, Caleb, hold that up for the camera. You're closer to the camera. But, you know, those aren't huge. But what, no. that's 10 11, isn't it? Oh, big time. Yeah, that's a beautiful perch, John. And you, you know, seriously, this is something that folks can try all winter. I know uh, years ago that, uh, you know, you get into uh, February and March, they start really moving into spawn, right? Yep. Yeah, they, more fish will start moving into the springtime. But no, this is an awesome. And there's only, it's a five fish limit, right? In, in Wisconsin. Yep, Wisconsin's five. Now you go down to southern Indiana and catch them too, right? Yeah, and you're allowed 15 down. Down there. Okay. Another one. I hope this is another perch. Feels pretty big, Caleb. Here he comes. There. Now that's another. These are just really nice sized perch. And when I'm catching them on, believe it or not, as a jerk minnow junior, you know that, Caleb? And you want to fish these right on the bottom, folks. And uh, kind of a coincidence running into these after lake trout fishing all day. We got to do this sometime. Come out here and, and see if we can catch some big ones. But that little jerk minnow fish right off the bottom, just twitching it. Now, what are you using? Uh, it's an Acme kind of. Oh, look, Ooh, at, that look one. at that. Is that a dandy, look huh? Look at that one. Oh, that's you're using that Acme. Is it, that a hyper rattle? It is. Yep, John. It's got a little weight to get down there, and I'm just giving it short little hops off the bottom. You know, when the camera was off, Caleb said, I wish we had minnows out here. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, it would be a slug fest. I huh? think so. Well, that's pretty good. That's in the last five minutes, that's four perch, right? Yeah. And you missed one too, right? Yep, and so did Gunter. I might switch. That bait, that, what's nice about that bait, it's heavy. It is, John. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, folks. Missed him twice and went right back down, and he hammered it. So what are you doing with that bait? That Just short little hops. Hold it next to the fish, the bait. So. Yep, just short little hops. Okay, and and that keeps a real tight line for you, it's too, right? It's a tight line, and you can just about feel everything down there. Because tell the folks, how deep are we fishing here? It's about 38 feet. 38 feet. Yep. And these fish are right on the bottom. Correct. So you're just jiggling that or what? Yeah, just short little hops. Folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm, John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2023 Fishing Contest. This week's first winners, Ross Elk of Rossell, Illinois, caught this 44-inch northern pike on Eagle Lake using a bucktail. Nels Brown of Marshfield, Wisconsin, caught this 22-inch smallmouth bass on the Wisconsin River using a bait. David Protzman of Hartford, Wisconsin, caught this 40-inch Schnook salmon on Lake Michigan using a plug. Timothy Brandt of Rhinelander, Wisconsin, caught this 15-inch crappie on Crescent Lake using a jig. 
And this week's first kid winners, Gage Olson of Iron River, Wisconsin, caught this 22-inch largemouth bass on Long Lake using a sucker minnow. And Braley Wolf of Colgate, Wisconsin, caught this 11-inch sunfish on a private pond using a red worm. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, when you buy the Milwaukee Hammer Drill Driver Kit and the K-Drill Ice Auger, you get a free $75 Fleet Farm gift card. And when you buy a Strike Master 24-volt lithium auger at a low fleet price starting at $429.99, you get a free $50 Fleet Farm gift card. Who doesn't love a bowl of hot chili during the winter holidays? So I decided to get a simple recipe online, but I wanted to make it 10 times better with the Johnsonville Mild Italian Ground Sausage. You can add this to any of your favorite recipes as well. All you have to do is add equal parts of your Johnsonville ground sausage and your ground beef. Ooh, does that smell good. I can't wait to try it. Wow, that is so good. That Johnsonville really made my chili so much better. Johnsonville Italian Ground Sausage. Find it at your favorite retailer today. What do you think I should switch from what I'm doing? I don't know, you've had some bites here. Let's oh, see. Look at that one. Look, well, turn, oh my gosh. Lift that one if you would, buddy. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous, Beautiful folks? Beautiful fish. And again, that's that, that hyper rattle? Yeah. Yep, like you said, it's the bigger version. So since we're fishing so deep, I'm maintaining quite a bit of contact with the bottom, just giving it little hops. Hey, look at that, my buddy Gunt in the back of the boat. He struggled with the Lakers today, but he's got a perch on right now. Here he comes, and oh my gosh, Gunter. Gunter, look at the size of that perch, buddy. Hey, Gunt, you do a lot of perch fishing on Lake Michigan. Is that unusual there, buddy? No, not really. I mean, uh... <laughs> and what was that on? Uh, that was on a power bait. And how big is that thing, buddy? That fish. How big is it? Oh, that one's probably going to be, I don't know, I want to say 12 and a half, 13 inches. Boy, is that a beauty, buddy. Nice fish, Gunt. Oh, did you see that one Gunter just yeah, caught? Yeah, that was a nice that, What do you got here? Feels like another per... Yep, another oh, perch. Yeah. No, yeah, show the folks at home. Yeah. No, I mean, we kind of stumbled into this today, you know. Looking for lake trout. A lot of time, you you and I will catch lake trout in the gaps, uh, not only in Milwaukee, but Port Washington all the way up and down. And we stumbled on these perch. This is a blast. It really is, John. Fish on, John. Oh, look at that. Chris is getting into the action here. here oh, there's a dandy room. right there. Perch room. Hold that up high. Now, that was on a cast master. Leave it right in there. Yep. And uh, that was on that cast master. And you just made a remark to me before yep. about the one Gunter caught. Yeah, that was the biggest perch I've ever seen in my life, John. I mean, that thing was uh, a monster. Now, you grew up in Milwaukee, you yep. know, and lived here all your life. Yeah. Did you know the wealth of good fishing that you had right in your own backyard John, here? I grew up in eighth in Ohio on the south side of Milwaukee. Yeah. And I didn't realize there was this nice a fish down in this area. Another one, John, another one. Oh, there we go. Let's see them. There we go. Let's see oh, the size of that giant, one. Another huge yeah, one. Yeah, show the folks at home. That I, I that is a beautiful perch. Another one of the cast master, John. And you know what's interesting? Tell the folks, you know, there's Kern out here. Explain that, Chris. Well, it, uh, John, all of a sudden we've been fishing and I was able to drop my Castmaster straight down to the bottom. This current picked up and 
it's dragging the Castmaster way out away from the boat. It's made it harder to feel bottom contact. You really got to pay attention. <laughs> All Here right, go. Caleb. Let's see here, buddy. Oh, it's a Ooh, good perch. A good I, perch. Yeah. No, I mean, so tell the folks now, we talked about that current before, and, and it slows down and it surges, slows, slows down. And, down. It's, and right now it's slowing down, and uh, we're starting to feel maintained with the uh, contact with the bait a lot better, and we're starting to get more bites. Gunter, Gunter, let's see, buddy. He caught the biggest of the day, and That's now he happened. caught another dandy That's there. The last one. No, you, Caleb, Caleb, when you look at that size of Gunter's fish there. Got one. Oh, you got one. Oh, this feels like a good one, John. I'll come up there with Gunter. No, have him come back here and All we'll right. show these fish if you get them. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. Hey, bring the bring yours back here, Gunter, and let's hold these up together. I mean, you know, everybody travels all over the Midwest to find perch. I really, Gunter, did, have they been around pretty good the last couple of years? Oh, uh, they're making a comeback. They're showing up more and more again. Ooh, in the back of the boat, back of the boat, and ooh. Take a look at that one, you guys. Look at that fish there, Caleb. Nice. I went back to that, uh, that jerk minnow. And, and Caleb, you know, time of day is pretty important uh, for this perch fish. And once that sun gets down, it's pretty much done, isn't it? Yeah, John, you know, with, uh, with how dirty the water is here, it's pretty stained today. I would say we don't have much more of a time, time frame left to get these perch fishing them down so deep. Caleb Zorn guides the Wisconsin waters of Lake Michigan. For more information, give Caleb a call. That phone number is 262-515-7944. Oh my gosh, oh, yes. look at the head on that. Oh. And look at that mouthful of weed. Yes. Look at that pike. Oh. Are you having fun with the tip oh, boats? Having a great time. Love Beaver Dan. Oh, look at that, Blake. Oh. Holy Baby. cow. Oh my God. Look at that pike, Blake. Oh this my gosh, it. look at the size of this oh. pike. Oh my gosh. It's that is a trophy so pike right there, pal. Oh, oh, oh man, is that, that gorgeous. Look at this guy, folks. Oh. This is a beauty. Oh, wait till you see the tummy on Look this guy. On uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. Thanks, buddy. You had a good time. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know where we're going to fish yet. We will find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods.